Deus Ex has returned for a new generation with a new engine and a new game world in tow. It's the most beautiful take on the series to date, and today we're going to dive into the most impressive elements of its engine. So warm up your retinal augs and prepare for a visual feast. Deus Ex Mankind Divided is built upon the Dawn engine, a graphics engine designed by IDOS Montreal based upon IO Interactive's Glacier 2 engine, the same technology which powered the recent Hitman games. While Glacier 2 may serve as a basis, the renderer has been completely overhauled with support for a wide variety of new techniques. The shift to a new technology platform has far-reaching advantages which have a significant impact on the game. From a broad perspective, the Dawn engine enables much larger and more complex maps than ever before. The prequel, Human Revolution, relied on smaller maps broken up into chunks, entering a new building required loading, which in turn breaks the immersion. The Dawn engine, however, is able to support these types of scenarios with ease. Transitioning from the streets of Prague to the Task Force 29 underground bunker is a seamless experience. You simply walk in, operate the elevator, and within a few seconds, you emerge below. Something that would have required a loading screen in the past. Now on paper, this seems like a small detail, but it adds up over time and having all surrounding buildings accessible from the main map without additional loading screens makes a huge difference here, adding a lot to the exploration element. Mankind Divided also offers up a level of detail far exceeding the previous title. It's not a game designed to wow players with fancy effects, mind you, but the sheer amount of clutter on screen combined with the high quality materials and lighting help deliver a world that feels natural and lived in. Parallax occlusion maps are used throughout the game on all three platforms, helping provide real depth within the world, as you can see here on the city streets of Prague. We see it here as well. Notice the depth in the texture. The materials used throughout the game are all physically based, of course, which has allowed the art team to delve into more challenging color palettes and material types. Creating a realistic environment full of natural stonework, for instance, can prove difficult, but the results here are uniformly excellent. There is a lot of attention placed into the way light and shadow work within the environment. Screen space reflections, for instance, are used liberally throughout the game, enhancing the depth of the materials while a form of volumetric lighting is employed in various scenes as well. An attractive bokeh depth of field is also used in certain scenes, such as this, which helps draw focus to the foreground elements. We see a form of cloth physics simulated here, with a lot of objects blowing in the wind as the player moves throughout the world. Again, it helps make this world feel more lively. Character rendering has also been improved this time with subsurface scattering helping to enhance the skin, in addition to a form of hair rendering that has been labeled pure hair. As you can see in these scenes, a high level of detail is applied to the hair on a multitude of characters. It isn't as well animated as what we have seen in games such as Rise of the Tomb Raider, but it is a dramatic leap forward over the previous game and showcases some very nice details indeed. Unfortunately, animation during these dialogue sequences can feel somewhat subpar with less than realistic facial expressions and sometimes wooden movements. Now, the series has never been known for great animation during these dialogue scenes, of course, but it is disappointing that things remain somewhat outdated here. Also, many of the game's cutscenes are pre-rendered just like the last game. On one hand, I do find that this is disappointing, as I prefer games sticking with real-time visuals that can scale to any resolution. But on the other hand, the transitions have at least been improved between each scene. It's no longer jarring as was the case in Human Revolution. Oh, and the black cuts used for stealth kill animations have returned. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this, but I did actually speak with one of the game's developers at E3, and the claim was that they continued with the system due to placement issues. When the animation plays back, specific placement of the two characters is necessary, and the cut allows them to make that adjustment without showing the adjustment to the player. I'm sure there could have been other ways around this, but at least it's nice to know that they were thinking about it. Crucially, Mankind Divided also includes highly impressive David Cage shower scene technology. It's quite good, and I give it a 4 David Cages out of 5. One star dock simply for lacking a motion controller driven Tau sequence.
As for how the overall image looks, we see an excellent temporal anti-aliasing feature here along with a sharpening filter that is not going to be to everyone's taste, including my own. Thankfully, in the PC version these features can be independently controlled, but unfortunately console users have to put up with this, and we can only hope that an option will be included in the future for those users. Regarding the anti-aliasing, if you look closely in certain scenes, you can actually see artifacts resulting from the temporal solution here. Now this isn't normally a problem, but it is fascinating to see how it works here. But overall, the game does push a lot of well-implemented techniques and produces very attractive visuals. And all of these things that I've mentioned are standard on both console platforms. Aside from the resolution difference, 1080p on PS4 and 900p on Xbox One, the two versions are visually identical. Both are great looking versions of Deus Ex. Now if you really want to experience an upgrade in visual quality, however, you'll need to check out the game on the PC instead. With the help of Nix's, Deus Ex Mankind Divided on the PC is the best way to experience the game. Thanks to a whole host of advanced options, the game is able to run well on a variety of PCs while still pushing high-end rigs to the limit. It starts with this feature-packed options menu. Full screen and exclusive full screen are separate toggles here, a simple thing, but a detail which suggests that the dev team is keen on taking good care of PC users. The field of view is also fully adjustable here, with this as the lowest setting and this as the highest. Surprisingly, multi-sampling is also supported by the game, but as expected, it does jack up the memory and GPU grunt requirements significantly, so use at your own risk. There's also a temporal anti-aliasing feature here that we see on consoles, which does blur the image somewhat if you're not using the sharpening feature, which I recommend turning off by the way. But it's the graphics option menu that really shines here with a huge number of adjustable options. Let's take a look at some of these settings and see how they stack up then. We'll start by checking out four of the available presets while running the benchmark mode. There is also an ultra option which we'll take a look at in a moment. So the thing that is most evident off the bat here is the lack of post-processing effects in the lowest settings. Anti-aliasing is disabled, along with depth of field and the volumetric lighting effects leading to a visually less interesting looking game. Reflections are also disabled at the lowest setting while objects draw in closer to the camera as you step each setting back. Thankfully, the game does still manage to look very nice on all but the lowest preset. As for the Ultra preset, the GTX 970 I've used here actually struggles somewhat with this mode with dips below 30 frames per second. 60 FPS is simply off the table here on this card. So how does it actually stack up against the console version and where do they fall in? Well here's a shot from the beginning of the game. Rowing through the various settings we feel that the consoles come in around the high preset. Take special note of the overall scene lighting as well as the shadow details against the wall there. And then we have various individual settings that can be adjusted. First up is texture quality, which includes quite a few settings here. Very high and ultra both require a GPU with a lot of memory however, and the game is always going to warn you about this if you don't meet those requirements. Once you hit the high texture setting though, things do tend to look pretty sharp overall. It's just the medium and especially the low setting where things really drop in quality. Next up is shadow detail. And here's how things stack up. As you'd expect, shadow resolution is decreased as we lower the setting, with the highest setting offering extremely sharp looking shadows across the board and the low res option being rather chunky. The PC version also offers contact hardened shadows here, which determines the sharpness of the shadow as it moves away from the object casting it. So when it's sitting next to an object, the shadow will be at its sharpest, and as the cascade moves away from the object, it will become softer, which is what we're seeing here. Motion Blur is another addition here, and this one is exclusive to the PC version. It's a subtle effect all around, but it does improve the appearance of attacks in fast motion. The parallax occlusion maps can also be adjusted with varying levels of quality and depth. Disabling the effect entirely results in very flat surfaces, but as you increase it, the textures become increasingly rich in detail. This is of course a great feature that is used liberally throughout the game, even on consoles. Then of course we have three ambient occlusion settings. Off, which looks quite flat as you see here. On, which is the equivalent to the console setting. 
and then one step above that which of course looks even better. Then we have the level of detail setting. As we zoom in here, pay close attention to the distant details. Only in the highest setting do we actually see the full details represented here at a distance. So after spending a few days with the game, I feel that Deus Ex Mankind Divided is an understated but beautiful game all around. The requirements are high on the PC, but the results are worth it. Beyond that, it feels like a proper follow-up to Human Revolution and is a game well worth playing whatever the platform you choose it on. But that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, this is John, signing off.